happen. And you're going to have today, you're going to have myself, Phil Gerbershack, and this week's guest is Douglas Carr. And we're inching closer to episode 200. We've been doing this for quite a number of years. It's something I really love doing. You know, and actually, I think we probably actually may have reached 200 at some point. Uh, we did take a few weeks off when we first were getting started uh, with live video. And I got to say, live video, it's something that I really love. I'm going to pop on and say a quick hello. Hey, guys, how you doing? Um, we have a great show for you this week. We're going to be talking about Facebook Live. Facebook actually has some new live video updates that you absolutely need to pay attention to. Uh, they also have uh, updates for Instagram this week. Uh, so we've got Facebook, we've got Instagram. Obviously, people are also saying, hey, they want to break Facebook up because they think it's becoming a bit of a monopoly. We've got updates from YouTube and maybe a couple of more. But um, I'm going to just say a quick hello. Hey, guys. And I'm going to bring on Phil. Phil, how are you doing this week? What's up, Christian? We got lots of good stuff to talk about, man. I'm doing great. I'm in Orlando. StreamYard works from your phone, folks. So if you're struggling with your hotel wireless, go on your own little LTE connection, and you too can use can still yes. go live, which is was not possible with most of the other tools we've had, which makes yeah. me really love StreamYard even more. We had Gage on a couple episodes ago. So if you're thinking, I need a solution live, go for StreamYard on your mobile. And uh, go to socialships.com forward slash go forward slash StreamYard. Uh, that'll actually get you, that'll be our referral link. But basically, if you go there, um, definitely check it out. It is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic platform. I can't say enough, honestly, about StreamYard. Um, you know, it's, it's how I add all of these background graphics that we have. You know, we bring up banners, for instance, during the show. But of course, you know, I think it really also comes down to just our writing and our, our script writing, basically, Phil, you know, um, being able to, you know, put together a show and just have it scripted out. So um, I want to thank everybody for watching with, with us this week. If you're on our Facebook page, uh, our social chefs, facebook.com slash social chefs. Also my uh, personal Facebook page, as well as over on YouTube. But just do us a favor, say a quick hello. Um, you know, if you want to invite your friends, either tag them, start a Facebook watch party by clicking on the dot, dot, dot option, hit the share button. There's lots of things that you could do uh, to invite people. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback last week. A lot of people were really excited about the show, you know, having stumbled upon it. Um, so I'm excited and I, I want to talk about yeah. this update as well. So I'm going to bring on our guest, Douglas Carr. Phil's going to do a quick intro and we're going to get going. Yeah. So, so Doug is a superstar, man. Doug is one of the guys I started following, gosh, 15 years ago, I think, uh, on the internet and finally met last year. We spoke at the same event, of course, in all places, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So Doug is a digital marketing and tech genius. He served in the no. Navy, served our country and is a great guy. And he's, you, you, Doug, you look fantastic, buddy. For those of you who haven't followed Doug for a while, He's lost a bunch of weight and he looks even better than ever. So we're so glad you're here, Doug. Man, you set the expectations high. You got to lower those. You know, this is the beginning oh, of the show. Yeah. Doug <laughs> just signed up for Twitter yesterday yeah. and was curious what the flock is all about this Insta face snap. Yeah. He does isn't really sure. And uh, yeah, when it comes to technology, Doug puts the I in IT. Is that better? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. So the first intro was more true. Um, but really, Doug, you are a luminary to me, buddy. You're someone that I look up to and someone that I'm just honored to call my friend. So I appreciate it. And likewise, too. Uh, we've had a great relationship online uh, over the years. So and it was and it was great to speak with you, too. The the we did an incredible event out there. So follow, follow so Phil, follow me and meet us in uh, South Dakota. I, I'm sure we'll be back again sometime. Yeah, let's hope so. Maybe we can even bring Christian along for the fun. Absolutely. So, so. I think I'm good to go, Phil. Um, awesome. What, what do you want to? What do y'all want to tackle this week? Because we got a lot. Of oh people. well, I firmly believe that connection starts with happy birthday. And Facebook screwing with my birthdays makes me kind of kind of angry actually because I miss people's birthdays now because now I have to search for them. I get one notification. And then I on my calendar now, I don't get to see it. So kind of annoying, but what do they do? They force us to now wish people a happy birthday in our own story. I don't know if you've seen this, but this is fascinating. Now they want me to privately tell only 13 people that it's your birthday, Doug, <laughs> instead of everybody. What's the deal, dude? 
You are you are you seeing this too, Doug, or is this just me and Christian seeing? No, I I noticed it. I, I noticed that they're they're making basically a card that combines your photos or events that you've been to, and then you can you can either post it on their wall or send it as messenger. Oh, even crappier than that, though. Even worse than that. What they're talking about is now it says in the listing of the nine people whose birthdays it is today. It says tag them in your own story. <laughs> Here's the bigger one, right? So, so worse than the video that nobody watches. Now it's in their story, so nobody's even going to know that they that you've tagged them in your story. So this yeah. is interesting, right? So it takes the takes the wall post that was all the fancy background, turns that into a card that now nobody knows how to download, <laughs> and now it becomes a private message between me and you. So nobody can even see that I wished you a happy birthday. I don't know. Well, I'm, well, isn't I'm this unsure if this is good? Isn't this part of their uh, their overall you know plan to do more private you know conversations and groups and everything else and get less public wall? Yep. Oh, totally right. This is yeah. this is the whole move, right? This is the whole move. I'm I'm I'd be shocked if the next move isn't uh, make a make a private video with a birthday uh, with a birthday filter so that I can send it to you so that I look like a puppy dog panting on your birthday, Doug. Wait, with with, with an ad yeah. with an ad in it. With an, well, right in the middle of it. Happy, hold on, just wait a minute. We're going to put an ad in the middle yeah. from Doug Carr to wish Doug Carr a happy birthday. Yeah, exactly. Because you're the only one that watches my stories that talk to you, right? That's my challenge. Yeah. So, and no, and the thing is, right, no, uh, businesses don't get birthdays. This is the challenge, right? There's, I don't know how they're going to do this for business. This is certainly something personal, which is now forcing users into the stories but i don't know how they're ever going to do this for business is this you know is this happy anniversary of liking my facebook page so that i send you a reminder now you unlike me because you realize you really don't like me or what well they'll 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 make you pay for it if you're a business yeah yeah well i can't but i can't buy your birthday though that's the interesting thing right not like, yet buy that well <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can. So if you set up a public, uh, if you set up a public fundraiser, maybe then I get to buy your birthday. Maybe that's yeah. why they're forcing us to host fundraisers for our birthday. I, I don't do know. you guys? Do you guys get the feeling that the the more Facebook messes with Facebook, just the further they're getting from, you know, why we loved it? I totally do, Christian. What do you think, buddy? I, I definitely think so. I, I mean, here's the thing. I like that they're trying to push. And again, we've talked about this on the show a lot. They're trying to push people to use stories. Yeah. You know, hey, like, why not take something that is, you know, a, a sort of an insignificant feature of Facebook? I mean, it's fantastic. Love getting birthday messages. But in a way, it's an insignificant in, insignificant feature in a way because, hey, you know, it's something that's kind of, you know, people are going to do it and, you know, they're going to see how fun it is and all that sort of stuff. And then, hey, they're going to now want that in everything they do on Facebook. So I think it's a good move from that perspective. But I honestly, I would love to see this work for a business, uh, you know, for a business to be able, you know, for instance, a business that cares about their customers, you know, that they learn what somebody's birthday is, and then they can actually use that to, for instance, then push the person, you know, maybe a discount on their birthday and things like that without actually having to, you know, ask them, well, hey, you know, can you fill out this survey and, oh, give me your date of birth while you're at it. Um, Pr have Christian, to oh. Christian, I totally predict that that campaign is forthcoming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, I totally agree, but I got to tell you, that's the worst gift for anybody on their birthday. Hey, happy birthday, Christian. Come spend money with me. I'm going to give you 50% off of garbage because, you know, you're going to go out to dinner for your birthday. So why not go out to dinner with this guy? In yeah. fact, you know, if you're really nice to me, I'm going to let you even buy my dinner. Happy birthday, Christian. Yeah. What the hell, dude? Come on. Right? That sucks, man. That's mm. terrible. That is the worst birthday thing ever what i would like to see is you know give me a free maybe a free appetizer or better yet here we go so on your birthday i'm gonna give you a free colonoscopy <laughs> that's what i'm talking about we're gonna rotorood your poop shoot for your birthday <laughs> i don't know if anybody's looking for that just drop a just let us know and i'm sure we can find a colonoscopist is that how you pronounce it <laughs> Do that for your birthday. What do you think? Guys, guys, I just didn't know that poop was on the allowed word list before this. Oh, I, everything is on the allowed word list. We are <laughs> we are we are anything but NC17. I just want to be clear. So yep. So here's the other thing though. I, I could also see this being useful for Facebook portal. 
you know, Facebook's hardware. Oh, yeah. This could be a very nice little tie in. So, for example, you could quickly maybe maybe they have a tie in where you can actually record that through portal and have it go into this. That would to me, that would be a pretty sweet setup um, to drive more hardware sales and to also you know encourage people to be a little more, you know, fun with some of the posts they're doing. Um, yeah. yeah. You guys are totally right. I mean, it comes down to what they're actually going to be using this for. Uh, not every business, you know, needs to know when your birthday is to give you a coupon that maybe you're not necessarily going to use. Uh, yeah. But I just want to apologize to you guys in person that for those coupons that I sent you on your birthdays. Oh, I, I used it though. I sent it out <laughs> to all my friends, and I just want you to know, yeah, if you go to dknewmedia.com, you can get those free colonoscopy checkups. Uh, Doug actually will pull his head out of his own ass yeah. and put up yours just for your birthday. Totally free. Will cost you nothing. And I have my and I have my special glasses just to. You do. Yeah. Is that is that Robert Scoble or Douglas Carr? Oh, geez, tell. don't insult me. Come on. Oh, well, now. just don't. Just no video on the shower, please, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's no interns here to maim. Sorry. That's true. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, did we say that out loud? Okay. So moving forward. Christian, anything more on this or we want to move on? Uh, nothing more, really. I mean, I, I would love to see businesses have the ability to tie this into some of their products that they're offering. You know, but and again, I mean, you leave it up to the business to make the decision on what yeah. the right thing to do. But I'd, I'd love to see them have a tie into this. Um, yeah. because, you know, it gets them out of having to complete a survey and all that sort of stuff to learn more about you. Well, I think so too. I, 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 I agree, Christian. And I think that one of the things that really frustrates me with Facebook has been, you know, kind of the, the paywall that they've put in between consumers and businesses that consumers voluntarily followed and liked and everything else. And, and, and then businesses really invested a lot to create that nurture that relationship. And it seems like over time, you know, Facebook has just shoved themselves in between more and more and more. And, and, uh, and it's unfortunate. I, 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 I don't mind paying for advertising. Don't get me wrong, you know, but I, I do believe that there's an organic aspect of, you know, between the brands and the consumers mm -hmm. that consumers actually appreciated for a long time that, that, you know, Facebook kind of ripped out. And, and so, if they add, you know, some tools like that back in, it would be really nice because I, I think the that separation of, you know, church and state or whatever ha hasn't done, you know, society, you know, very well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Good point. So we've got Facebook birthday stories. Again, this is a feature that should be actually rolled out to everyone. Um, if you don't have it, so actually it should be. They're launched globally. Um, if you don't have it, be sure you update your Facebook app to the latest version. This way, you'll get access to the birthday stories feature. So one one note about that. Hold on, one yep. quick note, and that sure. is, if your friend doesn't have Facebook Messenger, you can't mm -hmm. send them a message this right. way. So just one note. So if you see it and you're like, oh, well, some of my friends do and some of my friends don't, it's not a glitch. It's because you need to. What do you think? Invite your friends to Messenger so that you can start moving them more and more private. So yeah. just know that's why that's there. Because um, I saw that the first time, I'm like, "Hey, what's this?" And then I look, I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's my friend who doesn't even have a smartphone." So yeah. I got it right. So just something to be aware of that that is uh, that you do need to have Messenger installed and configured to do that. Though you could go to Messenger.com and authorize the app that way and never download it to your phone. So it's something for people to know. Yeah. So second topic for the week. Live, Facebook live. live changes. Come on now, this is really important. This is so that people don't do some horrific stuff yeah. on Facebook Live. This is beyond the snarky shit that you and I were doing before, Doug. Yeah. This is really to stop people from broadcasting shootings in a mosque and other yeah. things that are just horrific stuff. So I think this, this is a big move. Now the question is how much is going to get censored and by who is it self-reported or is it, which I saw a rumor this morning from Matt Navarro on Twitter that says people are just approving everybody into a group don't have any gates. And then people are in the group, they're posting pornographic images and then reporting the group and getting you shut down. So just be aware here, folks, we're gonna start, this is the slippery slope we're going down here. 
we're going to see more and more where Facebook is going to be judge, jury, and executioner on what is right and what is wrong in Facebook Live. It's going to be it, interesting. Well, it, it, what really bothers me with it, uh, not, maybe not bothers me, is one is I, I really do believe that they have to be careful when they start curating content, they're changing from a, you know, a platform, a communication platform, you know, into actually modifying how we're speaking in society. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, if, if AT&T were to shut off your phone for what the conversation you were having in the 1980s, you know, uh, there would have been riots. Um, but I, but I do think there's an opportunity here and I don't understand, you know, Facebook is absolutely brilliant at, you know, uh, utilizing machine learning, uh, doing facial recognition and everything else. And I'm still surprised that they can't, you know, do things like, um, you know, maybe, you know, a AI detects it or somebody reports it and it instantly just says, Hey, we're going to put a 10 second delay, you know, stand by please, you know, and then, you know, the delay gives maybe, maybe that passes through another layer of filters or human interaction or something like that, you know, to, to, to check, you know, what's happening online. Um, but I don't like the, you know, one strike you're out, you know, kind of thing because people abuse that just as much as they abuse the, you know, the Facebook live is, uh, I, I don't know how many times, you know, I mean, Phil knows me, I'm pretty wide open online, but I've been reported a ton of times. Now, every single time they've looked at it and let it go and said, no, he wasn't being the jerk that, you know, you say he was being, but there's a lot of people out there that just jump on the bandwagon and they say, well, Hey, if a hundred of us report this person, you know, we'll get them kicked off or stopped or whatever. And, and there's as much abuse on the anti, you know, policies are, are, are the, as there are on the realistic ones. Yep. No, that, totally agree. Christian, what are you thinking? Well, so do you think this is a, um, do you think this is a, a harsh enough penalty? So for example, basically it's a one strike rule. Facebook yeah. will obviously like if you violate their community standards or lie on live or elsewhere, basically um, they'll take it down. And what do they do, they ban you for what 30 days and then you can like come back. I mean, do you guys think that's, you know, harsh, harsh? enough? I'm, absolutely. Right. I mean, I, that uh, if, if let's, let's, let's talk like real, real stuff, not the extremes, right? The extremes, yeah. of course, this isn't enough. Yeah. Right. There, there's never going to be enough, right? If you, if you broadcast a beheading, you mm -hmm. should be, you know, you should be kicked off this planet. Right. Forget yeah. about Facebook, right? Amen. But, but the middle, the rest of us, right? Let's talk about the 80% of us that are not doing anything dumb, but still manage to tick people off because they don't agree with us because we have the hypervigilant right and the hypervigilant left that okay. seem to fight against those of us normal people in the middle. Yeah. So is this enough? Absolutely. Is it potentially too much? Absolutely. But the problem is you have to start somewhere. So I applaud Facebook for giving some sort of control. My only question, and, and here's this, the challenge, they're going to go machine learning and all of us realize that machine learning is only as smart as the humans behind it. Yeah. And humans inherently are lazy. They're looking for shortcuts. So mm -hmm. if they see the word Liberty gibbet, and that's the key word, and they take that totally out of context, and that somehow started a hundred people that didn't like the fact that I mentioned that Doug Carr's got a beautiful shirt on today, people are gonna riot. And that's the problem, right? We, we're, we're now potentially inciting a mob just to get people that we don't agree with off of a platform. Well, and, and that's, that and that's, and that's my biggest concern is that people yep. will utilize this and abuse this policy that's in right. the reverse. And that's a, uh, you know, the, the weird thing to me is, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I, I really hate that they're starting to get their fingers in the pie because they have all of the tools. They have reporting tools. They have blocking tools, muting tools. You know what? If someone, if someone has a channel that's horrid, block it. Don't follow it. Get out. Right. You know, and, and uh, I, I really hate the fact that we're living in this, you know, life where, and there is the mob is getting a part of this. You know, you know it, Phil. I see it on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I see it on Twitter all the time. Where all the time the the someone will literally have a tweet that says report this tweet, 
and yep. they get their thousands of followers to report it, get that person blocked, thrown thrown off sometimes, suspended for 30 days, and and it was really for nothing, you know. And and that's that's my I, I feel like they're not talking about the abuse aspect of this enough. They're talking about obviously, I, I think you're right. The the people that are doing crimes online, guess what? We have laws for that. And so they have every right to kick those people off and and uh, and, and everything else and report them to the authorities. Mm -hmm. But them trying to be their own police and and investigate themselves and everything else, it's just not working. Yeah. Well, it can't work. That's that's yeah. the thing, right? That doesn't scale. That's not their job. Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn are not the police. Right. They don't have those tools, nor do they have any sort of judiciary discretion right. other than an escalation point. So absolutely report, report. That's great. I think every platform should have report, yep. block, and, and not to mention, we should be really stricter about the age requirements, some of those things, right? I mean, stop, parents, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, what's he talking about? Here's the thing. If you lied to get your kids on Facebook before they're 13, if you lie to get your kids an Instagram account or to sign up for a Gmail account before the age of consent, you are the problem, Yeah. not the platform. You're the problem. Your seven-year-old should not have a smartphone that can access Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and have a Gmail account. Just should not happen. So therefore, if that's the case, and I firmly believe it is, come at me if you think it's not, but if, if that's the case, if you absolved yourself of parental rights, taught your kids it's okay to lie to get what you want, and then you wonder why people are doing this stuff. Well, we got other problems here, right? This is a societal problem, but let the police do what the police do. Let the authorities do what the authorities do and stop expecting platforms to make you feel warm and fuzzy when oh. they're here to make money. Amen. And here's the thing. I mean, you guys are, you guys bring up some fantastic points for, you know, business, um, you know, or for anyone that's trying to use live. I mean, again, um, this is, you know, this is, again, it's a step that has to be taken to, yep. you know, curb abuse for Facebook Live. But it also, you know, it starts with education. I mean, you have to know, like, what you're actually pushing. You know, this also will affect people, for instance, like, people that are taking snippets of videos and reposting them. You know, if it's uh, something that's been removed, that's something else that can also cause some issues for you using Facebook Live. They're also looking at making restrictions for running Facebook ads. So I like the fact that they're going to do that. Uh, other thing, though, that I think is really important here, uh, you know, as far as these restrictions, I mean, um, Facebook just, need, you know, the bottom line is if you're doing the things that you're not supposed to be doing and chances are you're not watching the show if you're not that if you're that person, um, you know, you just have to like just if you're doing it right now as a business, just follow the you know, follow the rules. What do they say? Personal you know, responsibility. Right. Yeah, right. Yep, that's right. You know, run your business in the right way. You know, for example, if you're like a, you know, if you're um, let's see, you know, if if you're a retail business, for example, you're a restaurant, there's there should be no way that your Facebook lives get blocked because you're trying to sell products, you're trying to run a business. You're not, you know, don't get yourself involved in all of the things that get you away from running your business. Yeah. If you're in a controversial business, for example, you know, a lot. Of, uh, can you think of any controversial businesses, Phil, that might want to use Facebook Live? Uh, sure. I, well, I can talk about right adult entertainment. Okay, that's right, that's that. a perfect okay. example. What else? What else? Get that We've selling so, selling guns, okay, selling that. guns or CBD yeah. oil, yeah. right? Yeah. Any of that multi level marketing, right? Which is always kind of the, because the rules are kind of gray. Right. But that is the problem, right? If your rules are gray in your mm -hmm. industry, I would encourage you, though you can certainly benefit from breaking the rules. And we all know this is true. We all know those rule breakers that set their own rules, the pioneers, if you will. I, I get it. But build a real business. Stop trying to cheat those of us who want. I mean, because really, I want to spend money. I love to spend money. I love to give my friends money. But if you lie and you cheat and you, you know, I, I watch people all the time. They rip other people's videos and then they put them up on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook because, yeah. oh, freebooting is no big deal, right? I still gave them credit. Well, bullshit. You didn't give them credit <laughs> because they didn't get your ad dollars, right? You got eyeballs and then you took advantage of those eyeballs in the next four posts where you basically advertised your crap. I, so I, don't do that. I, I got a great a buddy of mine sent a great video and please don't go out there and give this guy any views. There's a guy, There's if, if, if you look up like TEDx fraud, there's a guy that literally plastered the TEDx intro 
And then it's him standing in front of a wall talking about fraud. <laughs> awesome. And, and I'm like, this is, you know, really, really ironic here. <laughs> yeah. Alanis Morissette playing in the, in the background. Yeah. Isn't it moronic? Don't you think? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Messed up. TEDx yeah. fraud. There you go. Let's yeah. Welcome to TEDx. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to thank everybody who's joining us so far uh, this morning, you know, or this morning, this evening, wherever you're at. We got Katie Biller here. We got Tim San, who we had on a few weeks ago, uh, Mario Diaz, uh, as well as a few others. But thanks a lot for joining us uh, for this week's show. Um, so, any other anything else on Facebook Live restrictions that you guys want to cover? I mean, I think we pretty nope. much. Hit the it's nail. a. They're in a tough spot. I I I guess I empathize with them a little bit. So. Absolutely. Tough spot. And hey, so if you're in a tough spot, you need to make sure that you stay up on the latest social media news. Make sure that you go to socialchefs.com slash daily to get your daily dose of goodness. Tough spot or not, Christian sends out great emails. It helps you grow your business with social media. So go to socialchefs.com slash daily. Get out of that tough spot. Get into a better spot. We can help you. That's socialchefs.com slash daily. So Doug, we're going to let this be the, the uh, player's choice here. Which one do you want to talk about? You want to talk about YouTube or the other topic? Uh, let's, let's talk about YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So YouTube is making it easier now. The big thing with YouTube is we all know that a 30-minute video or a 10-minute video needs to be cut up somewhere, somehow, and give us a little snippet of teaser in order for us to – actually get more people to view this but yeah. frankly i don't have any chops right i'm not good at editing video so how do we do this well youtube has got now a bumper machine an automated way to create six second ads six seconds funny enough wasn't that how long vine was <laughs> that's kind of ironic to me right talking about irony six second ads just like it automatically creates a thumbnail automatically creates a transcript now it's going to create a six second ad Doug, are you going to use this? What do you think? Well, I, I, you know, I want to take it back a step just because, you know, talking about video and here we are on a live streaming, e you know, event right now. And personally, the reason why I wanted to talk about YouTube is I really struggle with video. And, and I, and, you, you know, I, you guys know, I, I'm, I'm prolific at blogging and, uh, and then I love podcasting. Part of that is because of there's an ease of use with it, but video is a little bit different. You know, I'm I'm sitting here looking at you guys, and my my video is a little bit bluer, and I'm you know Phil's got a, a beautiful you know he's got a, a great camera and he's got good lighting. Uh, Phil, you look like you're in a hotel room because uh, you I are. Am. <laughs> you know, I and are. so so I'm always conscious of video is a little bit added layer in there, you know, and it's got to be. It's got to be aesthetically pleasing in addition to really getting to the point. On a podcast, I can talk about something for half an hour. And because people are sitting on a, a treadmill or in their car in traffic, they'll listen to the whole thing. But on video, I've got to capture people's attention. I've got to be concise. I can't bloviate. And so this bumper, you know, I, I love this because I think what what YouTube is providing people isn't just a tool, you know, maybe to produce an ad, but it's really helping people to kind of focus and concentrate and say, look, if you can't if you can't concisely say, you know, uh, put a teaser in six seconds, maybe you need to repractice, you know, your video uh, strategy. And, and that's why I, I struggle with video is because I like to bloviate and I like to go on and on and I like to write on and on. And, and so a lot of times a video that I do and I'm thinking, man, I'm just going to do a 20 second video on this. And two minutes later, I'm going, this is the most boring crap in the world. Why am I doing this? And so I've abandoned video a, a dozen times because I'm just not that great at the strategy. And so maybe tools like this will really help us you know, hone in our own, you know, uh, video, you know, methodologies. Yeah. I think that's a really good point, Doug. I think six seconds though, you got to get to the point quick, man, yes. six seconds. So if we think about that, that's yeah. not enough time to even say, go to socialchefs.com slash daily, but it is enough time to say, Hey, on the show, we've got Douglas Carr and we're going to be talking about Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Join us at 1130 PM Eastern. Perfect. That's it, right? Yeah. That's all we got. So to that point, I think 
as they go six seconds more and more, this is going to be the Twitter of video, Doug. This could oh, be a really big deal. Yeah. Right. Cause, cause I get you. It, it, it's easy to go on and on, but it's, but as we think about it, I thought Twitter was hard too when I started using it. Well now, dude, Twitter is the jam, right? I mean, yeah. and I say that knowing that, you know, I don't use Twitter like I once did, but for a long time there, I was very concise in my stuff and had to be tighter. I don't know. Christian, are you going to use this? Do you think this is big for you? So here's the thing. I think that the value here, and this is the hardest part for people to grasp, is that it's actually going to help you yes. get better at telling your story. So you have to kind of, you know, here's the thing. We do our, you know, we do our social snacks videos. For example, those are five minute or less uh, social media tutorials that we create. You know, we try to make them, you know, we make the video as long as it needs to be to tell the story. But we also look at the data. We say, hey, you know what? The data is saying, well, hey, you know what? Five minutes is too long. It should be like two minutes and 30 seconds. So we look at drop off and things like that. So I think the six seconds is a good way to get people to be creative and to think, can I tell my story in six seconds? For example, I was actually just trying to find it. But um, Audi has this brilliant example and they had a YouTube ad that they created. I've mentioned this on the show before. They had a YouTube ad that they created and it ran before somebody's video. And it was here's basically what it was. It was advertising like the Audi, like uh, which one was it? The uh, I think it was the TT maybe, but uh, or maybe their higher end one. And it was advertising how fast the car goes from zero to 60 in like 3.6 seconds with the length of the YouTube ad. So it was brilliant. Yeah. Cause, Hey, it told the story of the vehicle. It takes, you know, it's a vehicle that's X amount of seconds. Um, so it was a smart way for people to do that. So I think that it can help people, but I think from, you know, as Douglas, Doug mentioned, I mean, running ads that are six seconds, it's hard for people to create that. Well, well, and, and you don't have to tell a story though. Hold on. Let me be really clear. The goal is to peak interest, right? right. This is like an opener, right? I, I train salespeople all day. This mm -hmm. is what I do. And the goal with the first tease is six seconds, bang, get interested, right? Make yeah. me interested enough that I care that I'll listen to your three minutes. Because mm -hmm. six, right? And I think of it as six inches, it gives me a foot. A foot gives me a yard. A yard gives me a mile. Yep. If I can have a mile with you, right, a half an hour, I can yep. likely share enough. But if you don't earn my trust in six seconds, I'm not going anywhere. So, Doug, I'm sorry, buddy. You were going to say something. No, you, you, that that was a great lead into what I was going to say because one of the things that really bothers me uh, that that a lot of gurus talk about uh, nowadays on the internet is the lack of attention span, which is total BS. Um, you know, uh, and and I'll give you a perfect example. You know, you'll watch you'll watch the intro to a show on HBO, and then you'll be sitting there, you know, standing by for an entire season, you know, or you'll binge on Netflix or whatever. There's no difference in a lack of attention span with consumers or businesses. But what we what we have is choice. We have incredible choices. So I can watch a thousand shows on Netflix. So you've got to capture my attention at the beginning. And this isn't, I don't think this behavior is anything unlike the web right now too, is if I'm writing a page for a client, what I want to do is I want to capture their attention up front. So I want to have some good headlines and everything else in my text. And then I want to go into greater detail. And then I want to have visuals. And then I and eventually I really want you know them to, to scroll through an entire page that might be 1,200 words. But but telling people, well, you know, you got to write it in 200 words, other people, otherwise people aren't paying attention. <laughs> it's just it's just crap because we will sit there and we will binge and read and and listen for as long as it takes us, Christian said it perfectly, as long as it takes us to tell that story, but no more, right? And so I I, I think, again, this is tackling consumer and, and behavior where you, look, we have choices. We can go anywhere. I don't have to listen to the show. So if you don't capture my attention in the first, you know, second, and then, you know, help me explain it throughout and, and make it a value to me, I'm going to leave, but it's not that my attention span short. That's just total BS. My attention span, I am all in on listening to these shows and watching these shows and reading these articles. It's just that you have to, you have to capture my attention up front. I have to know that it's going to be worthwhile for me.
Yeah, my attention span for crap is six seconds. Exactly. But my right that but that's the thing. And and I would say that's totally true, but that's the whole power of choice. You made a great point there, Doug. Yeah. I have uh, 57 channels and nothing on, right? Was that uh, Bruce Springsteen, I think, had a song about that? Or maybe it was Dire Straits, right? 57 channels, nothing on. Well, now I've got 57 million channels or yeah. billion channels. If we really think about the internet, I can go anywhere I want, so why should I choose you? And if it's all about you and all it is is a six-second ad that you just stretched out over a month or a week or an, a season or your store is all about you or your LinkedIn profile, you rewrote it such that it is all about you and not about your ideal customer. Well, now, of course, I don't care. So you have just taken my six seconds, which I'm willing to give you. Yep. I'll give you a chance, but then you never earn a foot. Yeah, and exactly. Then we, and we blame that on consumer behavior negative. We blame that on lazy people to your point earlier, though, Doug, people who felt like they earned Facebook likes by begging for them or having crappy Facebook like contests. And now we wonder why we have to pay to cut through the noise. Yeah. Yeah. And and, it, and again, to go back to this feature, I think it's a great feature that is going to help us as marketers focus our attention and say, you know what, if I can't say it in the first six seconds, if I can't tell people what the value I'm going to bring them in this half hour video, then maybe I shouldn't do the video. That's right. Absolutely. Yep. If you can't hook me, then you shouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, that's really the case. Now, that being said, we do have some instructional videos. Instructional videos sometimes can go longer, but just understand that's for a much smaller subset of your audience. But but or, again, right? it, even in an instructional video, right? If I do a search and it says, I'm going to show you how to do this, that's the grab. I that's yep, there you go. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. And really so good so point. you told me the value that you're going to bring. So I will spend two hours you know, watching how to refinish a table. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and yeah, and to that point, the, the, the goal then is not to go viral, but to overserve those who really need it. Perfect. That's, that's the important thing, right? Cause I'm not, you're not going to get a million views on how to refinish a table because a million views on how to refinish a table, Doug, I'm never going to refinish a table. But if I watch that video and I think, wow, this is so great that I've got to share it. It's because it entertained me, not because it instructed me, because I'm never going to do that. Yeah. And I'm not the right audience, right? I'm the guy who goes to Home Depot that doesn't even, I don't know the difference between a screw and a nut, right? There's a, there's, <laughs> that's me. I'm just, I'm just saying, man, I'm about as handy as a three peckered billy goat. So I'm wrong, wrong audience. But if I share that to my folks, right, I probably have people like you, Doug, who are handy. Yeah. Who can do some of this stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Lots of stuff there. Christian, you get the last word. Well, so I got a couple of actually a couple of things I want to bring up. Uh, Katie Miller's, you know, uh, question she had here in the comments. I don't know if you guys saw that, Phil. Oh you know, yeah, ten IG stories help people learn to tell a story, uh, a short to the point story as well. Especially if the time is taken to stay within each uh, ten or fifteen second snap. Definitely. Uh, what do you guys? Katie. Think yeah, and right Kate, on the money. And Katie, it's why I struggle at it. If you guys follow me, I rarely tell stories and it's, it's, I struggle. So I, I want other people to know that too, that, you know, I help my clients with this and help develop these strategies for them. But personally, I really struggle with not going on forever. Yeah. Well, and the other thing also, by the way, um, speaking of this, like, I mean, Snapchat, Instagram, yes, like they do help you do that. And that's actually something all, that's also mentioned in the article, which is, if you're a creative person, and we have to kind of look at this, they should probably preface this with, if you're a creative filmmaker, for example, you like constraints on things. If somebody says, right. hey, you have, you know, uh, three day, you have 24 hours, for instance, to turn around this video project, they like that challenge. Yeah. I think where there, it gets to be very interesting because, you know, you have the people that are professional filmmakers and you have the people that are using the tools that are typically in a lot of cases professional tools, but they're not necessarily professional uh, video, you know, for filmmakers, for example. Um, so I think you got two different, you're trying to fit a different type of person into that slot. Well, it's and, people who use stories. I'm a stories user. Like you follow me on Instagram. I use stories, but I'm not a storyteller on Instagram because right. I don't like, frankly, I don't think about my whole day and then plan my snaps around it. That's right. the difference, right? right. I, Cause frankly, if I were to think about my whole day, I'd be like, I'm not that interesting. Why would you even look at that? But certain things are. So if you look again, look at Phil Gerb on, on Instagram, you'll uh -huh. see I use stories, but
but seldom do I actually tell a story. Like it's not coherent. It's right. just random stuff that kind of inspires me. But that's kind of what gets my day going. Is right. random stuff like that. Very different. I and yeah. and I, one thing I want to add here, just advice for everybody too. And and this is what I need to do as well. Is I I follow there. There's a guy you you should all follow him, Demian Ross. Uh, he did a road yeah. to road to a thousand videos. So he forced himself every single day, and I think he's about halfway through, maybe even more. And they're they're brilliant videos. But if you watch the evolution of when he first started to now, it, it's incredible seeing the transformation. And and talk about a guy that in the first second he captures your interest, and then he talks about it, and then he even has a little bit of uh, you know bloopers and after reel. That's that's amazing. And I, and I think one of the takeaways that I, I learned from him was he really struggled up front, you know, with getting his format and getting that discipline and everything else. But by forcing himself and setting a goal that, hey, every single day I'm going to put one of these out, he just got better and better at it. And I that would be my advice. And it's what I want to do personally as well is if, if you want to take on stories and you want to take on this six second, you know, um, Hey, do it every single day, and don't worry about the crap that you put out at first. You'll get well, better over time. First, yep, yeah. The, right. the great nobody thing about stories, it right? It's gone. Yep, that's right. That's a really great point. So practice, get better, shoot a thousand of them. I mean, we're probably our show is probably a little stronger now than it was a hundred episodes ago. That's just natural. So do improve, but do jump in. I would say practice, get used to it. Tell 15 seconds, even if you can't tell the whole tale, try to tell 15 seconds at a time that gets you interested. Because yeah. if you'll watch your own stuff, your audience probably will too. And I have, so I have two more things real quick. Uh, so one of those, I want to bring up a, a comment from April Roga here. So um, April says, you know, hey, it becomes easier to tell your story when you focus on who you are and not what you do. I think that's where many are stuck in the live streaming space. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nobody For cares sure. what you do. Exactly. Yeah. They want to Thank you, April. Who can help them. Well, and, and I, you know, that that's uh, I'm struggling with a, a client right now that it's that's what they keep doing. They keep going into say every sales presentation and say, you know, we can fix A, B, and C. We can fix A, B, and C. We can fix A, B, and C. And the problem in sales, you know, Phil knows this firsthand, um, is people people don't care about the solution. They they're worrying about whether they can trust you. Mm-hmm. They're worrying about if they put money into your hands. Are you someone that's going to take care of them? And right. so this whole, you know, we talked about trust earlier online and everything else. And that's, it's just a brilliant comment because if you reveal who you are, uh, sense of humor, um, you know, uh, what you've, mistakes that you've made, uh, how you've overcome them, all of this vulnerability and everything else, what you're doing is building that trust with people. Other people will build your authority, right? I'll talk about Christian and Phil all day and talk about, hey, you know what? If you need this type of, of consulting, if you really want to improve your you know, social media presence, if you really want to improve your, your sales presence, you know, these are the guys to talk to. I'm doing that for you. I'm talking about what you do. But when you talk, when you talk to these people, you really have to reveal who you are as a person, because the only bridge that you have to pay, basically get through is the trust bridge. And, and so that's a brilliant comment. I'm so glad that, that she said that. And then the second thing I want to do is I just want to show everyone a quick example of the bumper machine. So for example, of a six Ooh. second version that was created. Ooh. The thing to also keep in mind, I don't think we've actually mentioned this, is that YouTube bumper ads are using artificial intelligence. So what they're going to do is they're going to take your video, they're going to create a six second ad off of it based on, for instance, maybe they're going to pick a shot where the logo is very visible. They're going to pick a shot where maybe it's a good close up of you and so forth to put together this six second ad. And oh again, God. It, and yeah, I realized <laughs> he desired. And so it's the. <laughs> For six uh, seconds, hold there. Okay, Christian, show us the show us the clip. <laughs> I guess, so like, it's the have, colonoscopy scene. That's so, it. <laughs> so here we go. We'll play the six second video for you. So that's it. Wow. wow. Yep. So um, that not was a, completely yeah. useless. Fantastic. 
I mean, really, that didn't give me anything. That didn't give me anything. I what is Grubhub? Is that where I go to meet girls? What is this? That's terrible. I don't well, want to see that crap. If but, that doesn't but Phil, work, oh you're missing. God. But it's AI and machine learning. It'll get better over time. No, I yes. know. I know. I'm just saying, right? So that's I'm with you. No, Christian, that's super helpful though to see what that looks like for folks. So if you if you were wondering like what that was, if you're just listening to this in the background, know that it was a quick little thing and then it dissolved to the Grubhub logo. I did like then, that they did that. I did, I, like, I did too, right? That's I did key. like that they incorporated the logo in it. Which, which tells me we need to really be cognizant of adding end cards to the end of our videos, uh, yeah. right? Because, because otherwise, what's it going to focus on? It's going to focus on, again, me. <laughs> Like that, because yeah. that's what it thinks, right? Or me with my itchy ear then. I just. That's I just, right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Or I just pick my nose or something, right? Like, <laughs> hey, look at that shot. And Go other, to Ruder Gerbachak. And the other thing you also have to watch out for. So, for example, if you're creating these six second bumper ads, you want to make sure, and we've talked about this earlier, you want to make sure you're filming your videos in high quality. So, for example, you're using a high quality webcam. You know, if, for instance, if you're trying to use the one on your laptop, you know, hey, it's very low quality. Invest in a better webcam, yeah. and that will actually help you record better quality video so that when your ads are created, they look high quality, they look very professional, they look slick and whatnot. Or so, do it on your phone, right? Yeah. 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 Well, th that's the thing, right? Like today, I'm on my I'm on my iPhone X, right? I'm on my iPhone 10. Works just fine as a HD camera. Yeah. The, the HP laptop, which I love, wonderful for travel, weighs th less than three pounds. Yeah. Fantastic. But the camera is like 480p. It's like from 1997. I mean, I don't, I don't get that. But that's also why, right? I travel with my MacBook. Wait, what, so I what kind of my... laptop do you have? Oh, I'm sorry. Did, I said HP, but I really meant I also have a Dell at home there, <laughs> Mr. Douglas. So yeah. So you know, if you sent me another Dell, I would use it more. I'm just saying. So I'm happy. I'm happy to be a pimp that way. So free, free laptops get used. I've got otter.ai gear that that I, I wear all the time too. So yeah. <laughs> so cool. Well, hey folks, so if you're loving the show, we had more topics, but we're gonna move on to tool time. So you wanna sign up though. Make sure you get all the good stuff. We've got other stuff we could have covered today. So go to socialchefs.com slash daily, get the daily dose of goodness, get the recap, get connected with Doug, with Christian and myself, and learn more each week day. So that's socialchefs.com slash daily. So you can get all the daily goodness. So it's now time for tool time. And if you don't know Doug, Doug is a master of marketing tech. He's someone that I look up to. So we had to work hard to come up with some tools that we thought, hmm, maybe Doug hasn't used these before. Uh -oh. Maybe he has. Yeah. So we did give you a preview though. So the first one is Luminary. It's a premium podcast app. Mr. Carr, have you played with Luminary? Are you I have not. <laughs> so it is, of course, at this point, we're showing off the Apple one because people that have inferior operating systems we really don't like as friends. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. So what this does is Luminary has, first of all, it also has its own original podcast. So it is a network of podcasts. Remember the podcast network years ago, Doug, that Cranky yeah. Middle Manager was on and that? I think that's what Luminary is trying to be here. Much like Audible has its originals, Luminary mm -hmm. has it. Now, the challenge with Luminary is that I've seen sometimes that it scrapes feeds and doesn't always give credit back to the creator. Ooh. But it looks like a pretty cool, yeah. Right? So, but it looks like a pretty cool app. I don't know. Christian, have you used Luminary? I have not used it yet. Uh, you know, I, I was okay. looking at it mainly because of the fact that they want to sell premium podcasts. Uh, you know, basically right. they want to have people like Trevor Noah, you know, and, and guests basically like that, that, you know, basically it creates a monetary stream, uh, you know, for an individual, whether you're an influencer yep. or a celebrity, you know, or possibly a brand gets into doing paid podcasts. Um, you know, that's mainly the part that I actually am, am interested in with this. So, yeah. so they, yeah, I think but, this is cool. So it sounds like they're they're trying to be like a anchor in some way. Yeah, except, yeah, like except, anchor except, except without the tools, right? Right. Yep, without the tools. Yeah, and that, and that, a... and the resistance there for me, right, is that it, I re I really uh, don't like when someone kind of owns my audience. 
Mm -hmm. And, and so that's always the resistance there is, is if I, if I was going to join luminaries and they were going to monetize my podcast, now I'm dependent uh, upon them and what happens next, you know? So, so yeah. 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 I feel you there, but here's the thing, man. I think anytime we get syndicated as a, as a content creator, if mm -hmm. I get syndicated to Gannett, right. To Gannett news source. And yeah. suddenly I happen to show up in USA today. Well, that's still my content. And I think totally if agree. I produce good enough content there, they'll follow me back. Yeah, and I agree. If I do a good enough job in the show, right? I should I should be able to monetize in other ways. But right. um, I, I, you know, audience portability, I, I think, is less and less a concern because, I mean, truly, what am I going to do with my face? Even my Facebook friends, right? I can't do anything with them. So yeah. I have to just kind of suck it up and be thankful that they're paying attention to me on the platform that I'm on for now. And maybe one day they'll follow me somewhere else. Well, and, but you do a great job, right? You have a variety of places where people can find you. My only right. advice is don't put all your eggs in one basket, oh, you know, because, God. Thank you. you know, that's all. So what do you yeah. guys think from the concept of like charging for podcasts? Do you think that for original podcasts, do you think that they, you know, that a company should charge for that? You know, should it, should somebody depends iTunes or the other platforms that are well totally available. depends right i mean what are you what are you doing a podcast for let's start christian we say this every single week right strategically why are you doing a podcast are you doing a podcast to get to to build awareness right. or are you doing a podcast to really have another product to sell right if you're doing it for the product to sell well then certainly a you're going to have to have better production value right you can't just have i mean not that we do a poor job here on the show, but we're not editing it out. We're not cutting it into segments. We're not adding music in between. We don't have, you know, we're not always HD on the, on the camera angle and the sound isn't perfect. But if I'm going to pay even five bucks a month for your podcast, it's got to entertain me. It's got to hook me. Every episode's got to be good or at least one out of three, because otherwise, if I'm spending money, I mean, it's so funny. People will download a thousand free apps, yep. but to spend $4 on word swag, I get pushback every time I speak about this. I'm going to talk about this this afternoon. People are going to be like, oh, $4 for an app. Yeah. Dude, you just saved an hour and a half, you bonehead. I mean, seriously. So well, that's our, yeah, that, that's, that's our, our fault, right? We, we educated everybody yeah. that everything's free, you know? Yeah. Well, it's the internet's fault, right? Yeah. The internet's fault. And that's yeah. the change. So that's where I think it really depends, Christian, on your on your on your purpose uh, for that. But you know, if I was producing something great, or if I was producing something that was super valuable to a super niche audience, mm -hmm. I mean, I know Manager Tools, for instance, one of my favorite manager podcasts of all time, has had a private RSS stream for premium podcasts for a hundred years. Nice, and they make a lot of money with that. Well, it because seems like they offer stuff that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, it seems like the you know maybe one of the approaches to take to this is you know outside of the entertainment realm and in the business realm is is you know if you put up a, a a learning management system and charge people to see a course, you know maybe that's where this could come in really handy. Is go. that if you put a a twenty four episode course on you know improving your you know SEO. Well, yep. then maybe someone might subscribe to it and pay for it because every single week, you know, they're going to learn something new. Yep. Yeah. And, and if I can't Google the answer, I might sign up for your course, right? If yeah. it's easy to Google and there's a billion uh, answers to it, I'm mm -hmm. probably not going to pay for your course. Yeah. And kind of to April's point earlier also, which is, you know, about knowing your customer, knowing yeah. who you're trying to reach. So for example, if you're targeting the customer that is not ever going to pay for something and you're trying to launch you know, paid content for a podcast, for example, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, you keep just, it's, you know, you're going to get like, or I would say, let me phrase it. It's not, it's not, it's not going to work. It's going to be a very tough uphill. Battle. Right. Right. And you get yeah. discouraged because you're not seeing the results. You know, you can't snap your fingers or launch your podcast and Hey, everybody's going to go check it out. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, right. It does take time, but that's tool yeah. number one for the week. Luminary cool. in podcast app. Now it's good. Number so let's show them the second one. Yeah. What else? My video. So this one is called Cinemaker Director. And what this one basically is, is it's a way for you to use an iPad as a basically, let's see, uh, an NLE, a non-linear uh, non editor. Basically, 
uh, you know, you probably heard about Final Cut Pro, or maybe if you're using iMovie or Adobe Premiere, um, it's, you know, a way for you to organize your shots. Now, when you move into live video, for example, we use StreamYard in the background. We've got essentially an editor that we've got going on um, where we've got, you know, different people we're bringing in, different banners, all that sort of stuff. Now, what, uh, what Cinemaker Director does is it allows you to use your iPad as essentially the screen for the layout of your show and bringing in different cameras. Now, that's the first part. Now, the second part is they have an add-on app that's called Cinemaker Capture, which works with your cameras, your, for instance, your iPhones, things like that. So if you want to have multiple cameras, you can pull them into Cinemaker Director. Nice. Wow. This is a this is so powerful. I mean, here's the thing, right? You don't have to have the the 4K camera in order to use this. You could basically chain together now six different i iPhones to yeah. make this work, which is really really cool. Now, the the question that I'm always curious about is, does this make people think that they're now a movie maker, or would they still pay a professional? Because I got to tell you. My guys at Forever Productions do a great job with my videos when I need something super directed, super produced, overdone, right? A, a little bit, not just a live. So I, I just worry because these make these so easy that some people think this replaces a professional. And what I would tell you is this is for those in-between videos that are a little bit better than live or a little bit better than the hold your phone up and talk to it or set your yeah. phone up on a tripod but yet are not as high speed as the powerful stuff that you need in order to really affect change with people. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I used uh, like Switcher Studio, I think is probably a, a competitor of this. And, yep. and, uh, and it was still, you know, you still had to kind of pre-think and set everything up and set up your screens and set up your camera angles and lighting and, and everything else. So it, it, there was still a lot of outward, you know, work that needed done. But the goal was to take a video that we had already, uh, you know, we had already had a series of and just enhance it and make it a look a little bit more professional. And I think that's where these are that I'm excited about these these stuff, because I I think it is, you know, one of those things where you can really, you know, kind of upgrade your presence. If your quality is already there and your message is already there. Now it's you can you know, take it to the next level on, on a, you know, from a look and feel standpoint. Definitely. And I've dropped the links to both of these in the uh, comments for this week's live video. You know, you've got Cinemaker Director and then the capture portion for adding the cameras in. Too cool. Um, as far as the price, actually, let me get the price real quick because, you know, granted, you are going to have a cost with this and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a like you're not going to get a free app. You're going to get a free. So you're going to get a free app to download, for instance. But, you know, you're going to obviously have some limitations there. Yeah. Um, keep that in mind. But again, you also get what you pay for. Um, you know, if you're, for instance, if your show doesn't have quality writing, and this is important. So like, if you don't have quality writing, for instance, you know, people writing, uh, you know, um, scripting out your show, for example, and you're just like, Hey, I'm going to go live and it's going to like, just blow up and do really great things. It's not going to, you know, I would say it's not, but you have to put a lot more effort into it than just say, I'm starting my camera and I'm going to start talking. Yeah. A lot that goes on behind the scenes. I think as both of you alluded to, you know, it's not just like, Hey, fire my camera up and we're live. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I'm tired of those. You got to <laughs> you got to get your screens, you know, your uh your scenes ready. I think yep. Phil said, actually Phil, are you saying something? Oh. Phil, we can't hear you, Phil. You Phil. <laughs> um, you know, are people are you planning the Okay, let's see. He's just muting it. <laughs> what Phil has to say. Um, but you know, basically if you're going to use, you know, a live app and you want to you know have everything organized you have to plan out the screenshots you do be something as simple as you know if you've got a whiteboard draw out your scenes if you get note cards plan out each note card put a little number in the bottom of the corner once you're sure that's exactly what you need it could be for example intro graphic outro graphic chop it up and put all the different scenes of what you want to bring in you know but there's there's work that goes into it well, and Christian, I think even this show, right? You know, you're doing transitions, you're bringing up the social comments, you're, you know, you're you're going back and forth between screens, and that that requires a ton of focus because you're paying attention to the conversation right now as well as doing all those changes. And so when we were doing it, when we were doing it with Switcher Studio, I actually had a guy that 
you know, he was on the editing side, you know, because I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit there and look at the lap, you know, the iPad, stay in the conversation and everything else. It was just too difficult. I'm, I'm a little bit thick that way. Well, and it, <laughs> no, it takes time, man. It's, it's harder to do for yeah. sure, Doug. I mean, that's the thing. It is harder to do. It takes practice. And that's yeah. where, you know, if you don't script it out ahead of time, if we didn't know the tool time is going to come up at about minute 45, 48, right? We would have no clue here. If we didn't know, right. that we're going to spend the first 10 minutes talking to you and then 30 minutes talking about three to four topics. It's way harder, man. But that's, again, that's where practice helps. And if you can't do it, like hire someone, right? So yes. this stuff, you know, I do this, right? Doug, I know you do this. Christian does this, right? Ross Brand. Mm -hmm. Think about, hmm, if I don't have the talent in-house, perhaps I can hire this out so that we can script out a show. That's right? it. So so be a, don't be afraid to invest. In That's how that happen because it can make a difference. And I, I got a kid that was, uh, you know, he went to Taylor University. He was a cinematography guy. He did the live studio stuff at the at the university, which was premium tools, right? Yep. You know, but when I handed him that iPad, he was like, oh, this is cool. And he just sat there the whole show switch switch screenshots you know brought in graphics and everything else and i was like oh oh my god you know and and so and it was because he was professionally trained on it and inexpensive absolutely definitely you know and um like i said i mean you guys i think both alluded to this earlier i mean for example like the price of this they sell hardware kits so they sell for example they sell you know adapters that will connect your ipad to high-end equipment so they nice. hardware kits as well uh, some that are basically doing 100 megabit Ethernet cables and USB to lightning adapters. So that's going to plug in your iPad. So like they've got uh, fantastic, you know, you can scale this up basically. That's the key thing to keep. Which is, which is really critical, I'd say, because yeah. if you're doing a live event remote, uh, I've tried it before and failed miserably where we were going to do a live event and we were going to go on a hop spot. So we set up a, a mini router with our own little network and it failed miserably because the the bandwidth clogging and everything else was just horrid. And so it's a it's really good that they're they're you know uh, in the hardware business as well because that can that's where you'll you'll have problems with multi camera you know live events. Great yeah. point. Absolutely. Awesome. So so that does it for this week's show. Like as far as the tools. Um, you know, we've got Luminaire, we've got uh, CineMaker Director with the companion CineMaker Capture app. You know, I'd recommend, for instance, you know, if you have an iPad, download it. Give yeah. It, see what it's like. Again, it's also about testing. I mean, we were talking about this behind the scenes, Doug and I, Phil, when we were trying to bring you on, you know, and, it, and everything's about testing. Like, we started the show quite a number of years ago, and it's it's been an evolution. I mean, if you look at where we started, you know, the show rambled on and on and on a lot of times. And we've slowly been, you know, we whittle it down to where like we get just the right content there, you know, yep. how many topics do we put in, you know, and so forth. So there's, you know, there's work that goes into live streaming. Until Absolutely. you got Doug on the show, that babbling asshole, you know. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all, Doug. Fantastic. Dude, we're right on time as expected, right? We're right in an hour, which is where we want to be. So Doug, speaking of rambling, dude, tell us all the places they can connect with you, starting with your MySpace page. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Just do a search for Douglas Gar. You'll find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Martech.zone is my marketing technology site. Uh, I would, I would, you know, I got to give a shout out. I, I co-host the uh, Dell Luminaries, which is a fascinating show where we talk to literally, these are the, the brains behind all of the Dell Technologies uh, companies. And, and we're really getting on the bleeding edge of, of technology. So, um, but yeah, look me up and, and uh, if you need any help or whatever, you can give me a call. I, 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 just so everybody knows, I'm kind of a CMO for hire. So I portion my time out. And right now I, I don't need customers, which is a really weird thing to say. Um, but, but, you know, obviously if you're a higher bidder, I'll, I'll go, but. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Martech.zone is great. Doug's got a great podcast. That Dell Luminary show is good as well. And Doug is just an overall good guy. He's got so much to share and so much to give. So definitely Thank you. look him. If you're listening, it's Car K A R R, like the car on Knight Rider that was the evil twin of Knight Rider. Yes. Of course. Yes. So see, I know that. So yeah. So Christian, what you got, buddy? 
So I just want to say, you know, it's been a pleasure having you on. I want to thank everybody who spent just the past hour with us, you know, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or checking us out on the blog. Um, we will have a blog post recap going out tomorrow with all the updates we talked about. We also had an Instagram shop update as well that we want to discuss as well as some other items, but that will go in the blog post recap. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I dropped a link to Doug to your Twitter profile in the Thanks. comments. If you want to go in and add any other links, feel free to do that as well. And make sure you guys connect with them, you know, again, and it's also about connecting with people because for example, as Phil mentioned, you know, and Doug mentioned, like if there's certain tasks that you're like, Hey, I want to do this and I need some help with it. Don't be afraid to reach out to, to a lot of people, especially us. I mean, um, a lot of times people say, well, Hey, that person's never going to talk to me. They've got, you know, 23,000 Twitter followers. They're never going to talk, talk. To Not me. true. So, love it when you do that. So, well, we, uh, people, I always tell people that so many people helped me build my business, uh, Amen, that, I, that I feel absolutely indebted you know, to, to give back. And sometimes time is the issue there. And sometimes I'm not instantly responsive, but I really do want to help other people. Definitely. Absolutely. So keep that in mind. And that's the other thing to also kind of keep in mind with like who you connect with. Like if you try connect with someone, Hey, they don't respond to you. Hmm. Maybe I actually want to connect with someone else who actually does want yeah. to have conversations and, and, you know, get to know more people versus somebody who really just, you know, doesn't have the time of day uh, to, to reach out to me. So totally agree. Yeah. So totally we're going to be, let's see next week. We've got uh Jim Pugh on He's part of the uh, Tim and Jim show as well. So we're going to have him on next week, next Thursday. We're still setting the time, uh, but we will let everyone know, but thanks a lot for joining us this week, Doug. Absolute blast. Phil. Thank you. you. This well, was fantastic. Woohoo. Gotta love technology. Thank you. Streamyard for making it work on mobile. Making yeah. me really happy. We give that props. So thanks a lot cool. for joining everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye-bye.